So, hi friends, in the series of economic surveys 2021-22, today we will discuss an another important theme, it is pandemic years prudent fiscal development. So, yesterday we have seen the state of economy, the different sectors and their contribution how they have performed, growth projections. Today we will discuss how the country is able to manage financial condition despite of having a pandemic and pandemic continued for two successive years. We are able to combat it to some extent, but still these are the two uncertain years and in this uncertain years, how we have managed our economy and as far as the fiscal financial condition of the country or the economy is concerned, how prudent we are and it is not only just a prudent management, it is also a prudent fiscal development. We have, we have not managed just alone, we also wanted to develop in the same path. So, it is not just a simple management, it is a management come development. We have addressed the challenge of that particular year and we have continued the path of development. That is what we have done. And in this fiscal condition, how we have achieved this prudency and how can we say that we have achieved a prudency and how can we say that we maintain some sort of development and as far as financial condition is concerned, we will discuss the parameters and after that we will discuss what are the measures that are taken by the government, some of the measures in order to achieve this prudency that also we will discuss. Okay? So, in the backdrop of an evolving pandemic situation, the fiscal policy of the government has become very crucial because there are many factors that affects the performance of the economy. At the government level, governments will do and governments will devise some sort of policies, we call it as fiscal policy. And Reserve Bank of India will also perform some special function in order to improve the conditions of economy, we will call it as monetary policy. This fiscal and monetary are the true two broader policies and apart from that as a society, private people, cooperatives at the individual level. So, these are all the players who will work in tandem in order to improve the conditions of economy. But among them, among them the fiscal policy of the government, the fiscal policy of the government is still a significant tool for addressing the economic fallout of the pandemic. Though we have the various instrument, but still the fiscal policy is a very significant tool, very significant tool. And in the state of economy, I have discussed how actually our economy or our governments are able to tackle this pandemic. And I have given an approach called a barbell approach or an agile approach. So, this barbell or agile approach is something different from something different from this waterfall approach, waterfall approach. So, waterfall approach means you will have, you will come to an understanding by observing all the parameters or the entire scenario of the economy and you will come up with a predefined solution and you wanted to implement that predefined solution or pre-committed solution. But whereas, in case of this agile approach or barbell approach, you will continuously track the performance of the economy, you will continuously track the various parameters of the economy and with that response keep it in mind and you will again give another sort of input. So, that means your input is not always constant, your input is completely depending on the output or the performance of various parameters of the system. Now, what is this two different type of inputs or different type of inputs that we have given to the economy? It is in different formats. See, first one is safety net. Safety net we have given initially, 
Lot of people suggested that okay, the safety net should continue, but we understood the impacts of the safety net because safety net cannot be continued for a longer time. Though we, though we required a safety net, but safety net should be given in an appropriate way and safety net should be given to such an extent. You cannot go with only safety net approach because we have seen what happened during this taper tantrum when we have pumped more amount of money into the economy, the inflationary effect we have observed. And I already told in the first chapter like this inflationary tendencies if it is increased then there is no use in pumping the money into the system because the extra money that you pump which does not have any value in the economy because of inflation. But over a period of time we have observed that okay certain input we have given later we have started reducing the safety net approach and we have started giving some credit subsidies and uh, also some sort of supply side measures. That means our input is not always constant like in the case of water up, waterfall approach but our inputs are always varied according to the performance of the economy according to the performance of the economy. If you looking into the quarter 1, quarter 2, just I will show, uh, if you looking into the, if you, if you looking into the quarter 1, quarter 2 of the 2020-2021, because this is the year, because actually it was in the year 2020, March we have imposed the lockdown, 2020-2020 we have imposed the lockdown. But Immediately after lockdown, I think within uh, 2 to 3 weeks, we entered into the new financial year that is 2020 and 2021. And in this 2020 and 2021, the quarter 1, quarter 2, we are almost in a lockdown. Q1 is completely we are in a lockdown, but due to some relaxation, but still people have that feeling of uh, lockdown. In Q1 and Q2, we have spent most amount of money on the safety net, safety net. So, what is the meaning? What is the meaning of safety net? Safety net means providing some sort of providing some sort of direct benefit to the people. Either it may be in terms of some jandan transfers or in terms of providing some sort of direct subsidies in one or other way, providing free, free rations and also started an employment uh, creating schemes in some of the states where uh, some of, where the states have attracted more amount of this reverse migration. So, in that we have started implementing the safety net and Q1, Q2 continued, Q, in Q1, Q2 we have continued the safety net approach. And why we have given the safety net approach, even you can argue that, sir, even if you spend that money in Q1, Q2 on safety nets, it may not be so productive. See, the point you need to understand, you cannot always look at productivity. The point is, it is a crisis it is a crisis, entire production has stalled and even the workers do not find any employment, they have lost their job, they do not have any money. So, in that critical condition, definitely you have to increase the demand of the people because in such a circumstances, because it is completely we are in a lockdown, if industry, even if they are related to some sort of daily usage items, either it, food items and anything. Even if they want to produce, they will look for the demand. Because we are in a critical condition, if you do not, if, if the economy do not have any demand, then definitely no one will produce. That is the first point. So, that is the reason why and moreover, the people do not have money in their hands and in order to kickstart the economy, we have provided the safety nets. But if you provide instead of providing the money to the demand stimulation, if you give the money to the supply side, what could have been happened in Q1, Q2? In Q1, Q2, there is a complete restriction, restriction of physical movement, restriction of physical movement because the pandemic is such that we have to maintain a physical distance and people are completely scared because at that point of time, we have lot of apprehensions towards this COVID-19 pandemic. So, because of this movement restriction and unavailability of the contractors or workers to do the job. So, even if you pump the money into the supply side or productive activity side, it may not be fruitful because simply money lies in the hands of the investors or companies or small companies or MSMEs. So, this is not an appropriate method to uh, take a decision on this supplying side in the Q1, Q2. 
So, in Q1, Q2, we have to provide supply safety nets and we have provided it. But over a period of time in Q2 or in later, that means in the later part of the Q2, when this relaxation started, uh, when these relaxation started in the economy, then people started working. Industries want to open. Then at that point of time, what we have thought in the Q3 is, we have started injecting money into the system. We have started injecting money into the system. Money not in terms of safety net, but money in terms of investments, money in terms of starting new projects, money in terms of starting new projects, new projects. So that is how in the Q3, the capex push has started. The capex push has started and whatever the capex push that we have started in the Q3 of 2021, it is continued in 21-22 and it is also being and it is also going to continue in 22-23 because recently you have seen in the finance minister budget almost 7.5 lakh crores of capital expenditure they have allocated. So, the inputs if you observe at an appropriate time we have given a different input by sensing the economy and different parameters of the economy and the conditions of the economy we have changed our input we have changed our input so this is what agile approach or a barbell policy and because of this barbell policy we are able to recover if you observe this graph in this the q1 and q2 this is a lockdown period lockdown period it was low it was low but again it was ramped up or again it was increased and whatever the thing it was increased it has continued even till today but here there is a slight jump because of again there is some sort of uh, second wave happened that is the reason why that is the reason why we are able to we are not able to spend that much amount of money but moreover if you see after the initial lockdown after the initial lockdown it is almost in a sustained manner but with some sort of uh, difference but anyhow this is because of another wave but when you compare it with the earlier lockdown the effect is so low the effect is so low so this is how the trends in quarterly capital expenditure so we haven't injected capital expenditure in the very first instant we have followed a different model here we have invested money but that amount of money in terms of revenue but not in terms of capital because it it requires uh, because the economy requires some sort of safety net but after that we have increased our capital expenditure because that is necessitated for the economy next now in this capital push in this capital push we have started various policies or we have started different programs before i'll come to that program but again i want to give some sort of idea see the idea is if you see march 2020 if you see the march 2020 that is the month in which we have imposed the lockdown but it is later part of the march but if you see that whatever the money that we have spent in the march food and livelihood we have spent 88 percent 88 percent and health 8 percent now if you see in the may to june of 2020 again food and livelihood food and livelihood and liquidity support to the firms because this may june month is that completely this april is complete lockdown and may in mid of the may we have started relaxing to some extent by the time of june we have started increasing some sort of economic activity and for that it has necessitated to provide some sort of liquidity support and if you observe from this to this here most of the money went for food and livelihood but it is not that because you cannot go on offer the same solution because the economy is changing so you need to observe the output and now the people are willing to work the firms wanted to open so that is the reason why you cannot follow simply the whatever the solution that you have offered in this month so now we have changed other liquidity measures agriculture because we need to start the agriculture activity and you need to supply fertilizers pesticides and other things credit facilities and everything so that is why we have spent more 
so for the demand boosting also we have given 6% but here we haven't spent that much of amount of money on different item because here the first priority for us is food and livelihood for that we have spent almost 88% of the money now from may to june if you come to the october october 7 and if you see the money it is something like 11 lakh 85561 crore now you can understand how much you have spent and you see 1 lakh 92800 crore in that almost 90 percent of the money for the food and livelihood so don't say like oh, this government is focusing only on this investments and all no the point is at what time we need to invest it on food and livelihood at that point of time we have invested but if you continue the same investment in the upcoming months also same level of investment in upcoming months also then it may not be productive for the economy so because you have other priorities these priorities are also going to provide the benefit to the people this is not going to this is not something like it is not going to help the foreigners it is going to help to the indians only but you have to change the strategy if you follow the same strategy it may not provide uh, that much amount of benefit so that is why diversified again come to the october now we are in third quarter see investment boosting 51 percent consumption boosting 49 percent in different way for the consumption and investment we have spent 73,000 crore and see the november again investment boosting continuing so this capex is now started continuing 51 59 housing sector part of infrastructure again some liquidity measures for livelihood agriculture so this is how we are spending now if you see june to december 2021 june to december 2021 if you see liquidity enhancing 39 percent exports boosting investment boosting health again still we are spending for the food still we are spending for the food but the point is you cannot spend the same level of money that we have spent in the march so this is what the meaning of this agile approach agile approach so this is what you need to understand this is what you need to understand now it is not just only it is not just only spending of the money for the stimulus but if you observe this atmanirbharata package the name itself is atmanirbharata package but if you looking into that package it includes various announcements that will boost the economy both in terms of medium and long run both in terms of medium and long run and now we have started investing this capital expenditure capital expenditure why you need to invest it on capital expenditure i already told like it will create employment it will have a multiplier effect and it will inherently having a capacity to take the economy into the growth path in the longer run so that is the reason why you need to invest it in capex so the capex we have started investing on railways roads urban transport power sector telecom sector textiles affordable housing and national infrastructure pipeline so ultimately we are end up with this national infrastructure pipeline now we are calling it as pm gati shakti so on this national infrastructure pipeline we wanted to spend 111 lakh crore amount of money so that is the level of amount of money that we are going to spend on that and you know already about this national infrastructure pipeline now again along with the national infrastructure pipeline we have already st already started this pil pil productive productive sorry pli productive linked incentives productive linked incentives see what is this national infrastructure pipeline we need to spend it on development of infrastructure infrastructure in the sense what are the different projects the item just now i have mentioned is part of national infrastructure pipeline and we have selected around 7400 projects 7400 projects and we wanted to invest in that and you are already aware about the financing mechanism of national infrastructure pipeline and by attracting the private player and also through an innovative mechanism we will collect we will pool the money and we will invest in that next when it comes to the productive linked incentive schemes also we have started when we are increase when we are changing our mix of stimulus we have also brought some of the policy changes so what is this production linked incentive schemes and under this we have selected 13 sectors 
Now recently we have added this energy storage and also this data storage things come uh, also uh, and, and no no that has given infrastructure status this data and this energy storage is under en infrastructure status but when it comes to the solar panels solar panels we have included it under PLI and already drones are included in under PLI. But anyhow, the total investment that we wanted to invest under this PLI is 1.97 lakh crore. 1.97 lakh crore. 1.97 lakh crore PLI. That means what PLI? PLI means if you are having a company and if you able to produce more that means on every incremental production you will be incentivized by the government. So it is not to start a company. The companies which are already started if you make some sort of increment in the production process for that incremental production you will be given some sort of incentive and for that there are some targets and you need to achieve that. So this scheme has started in order to promote more and more production. Because if you promote more and more production that creates more and more employment that, that provide more and more amount of supply that leads to the more amount of exports and that lead to create the demand in the economy demand in terms of employees who are participated in the production process they will get salaries and uh, they can spend some amount of money and when the production process is increasing the raw material suppliers to that industries also supply more amount of money that itself creates again more amount of demand in the economy. So that is what you need to understand. So this is PLI scheme we have started along with this the changing mix of stimulus announcement. Changing mix of stimulus announcement and budget uh, this year has stated that this PLI is having a capacity to create an extra 60 lakh jobs. 60 lakh jobs that is the projection that we are making 60 lakh jobs that are going to create. Now if you observe the entire our agile approach free food and direct liquidity benefit whatever you have given to the poor people of this country and also the whatever the liquidity support we have given to the firms credit guarantee because we have provided some industries we have directly provided liquidity for some industries we have given some sort of credit guarantee. So this fo free food, free food, so some sort of liquidity to generate the demand in the economy. Next this liquidity support to the firms, credit linked guarantee schemes and exports boost so whatever the exports boost we have given plus your PLI or I can say your capex. So this combination of all these measures has made India to bounce back that is how we are able to manage our economy prudently even though we have faced a serious and a severe once in century health crisis. Suppose had we not spent on this capex and this whatever the credit line guarantee schemes and if you go on offering the same food and I think the same liquidate to generate the demand in the economy probably it could have burden, it could have burden the entire fiscal and in return we may not create any amount of creative assets and if you do not create any productive assets then whatever the growth that we have achieved because of this initial measures called food supplies and, and uh, uh, demand improvement mechanisms in by injecting the liquidity the growth because of this amount of money may not sustain it may lead to inflation and ultimately you need to make a borrowing in order to inject this money continuously the interest burden may also increase. 
So we have followed a prudent mechanism, prudent mechanism with an agile approach by sensing the various parameters and conditions of the economy. We have used a different techniques and the result of that technique is we are here today. And it is not just bringing that economy back to the pandemic level, but now we are in the path of growth trajectory that has become possible because of this agile approach we have followed. We have followed. Next. <coughs> now, now we are looking into this fiscal deficit aspect. Fiscal deficit aspect. Why fiscal deficit matters a lot? Why fiscal deficit matters a lot? Because we are aware that our revenues completely fall down and anyway I am going to give a graph on that. Our revenues has come down. Moreover, our investment is very high. Investment in the sense investment for both liquidity enhancing and also for the investment boosting. In the initial days for the food and livelihood purpose, but in the later days for, for creating capital assets, you need more amount of money. You need more amount of money, but you have very limited resources in your hand. Then it has certainly necessitated for the government to go for borrowings. Borrowings. And when you go for borrowing, definitely, definitely it will increase your fiscal deficit. And you are all aware the implications of fiscal deficit. If the fiscal deficit go on increasing, it has its own effect on inflation and it is going to have an effect on the future finances because you need to pay more and more amount of in, uh, interest rate and also the investors especially the world class investors or the MNCs will looking into always your fiscal deficit figures. If they want to invest they will expect some certain level of lower level of fiscal deficit. So maintaining this fiscal deficit is also a crucial thing for balancing the economic performance. Because if you go on increasing the fiscal deficit and if you are unable to create a productive asset you know what will happen you know what will happen. So, the point is okay we will looking into the strengths in fiscal deficit. This is in terms of lakh crore if you looking into April to November 2019, April to November 2020, April to November 2021. This is pre pandemic, this is during the pandemic and this is post pandemic. If you see pre pandemic it is 8.1 and see what will happen during the pandemic 10.8 10.8 it has increased why it is increased it is pandemic year you need money now fiscal deficit as a percentage of budget estimate fiscal deficit as a percentage of budget estimate i will come to the remaining figures later pre pandemic 114.8 during the pandemic 135 but if you see after the pandemic, here also you will see after the pandemic. After pandemic, that means after pandemic in the sense we haven't completed the complete uh, pandemic, but anyhow we are now moving out of that pandemic situation. If you see 2022 to 2021, our fiscal deficit has again come down because we are again able to step back to the pre pandemic level and our tax collections has increased the measures what we have taken started giving some results because of that because of that our both cap our both revenue uh, taxable taxable revenue and non taxable revenue and also capital receipts has increased has increased that is the reason why we are able to reduce our fiscal deficit and we'll see the primary deficit see it is 4.7 and it is 6.9 and it is 2.4. Anyway, when your fiscal deficit increases, it automatically increases the primary deficit. It automatically increases the primary deficit because your primary deficit is fiscal deficit minus interest payment. Interest payment. But if it is so close to the 10.8, that means you 
you are paying less amount of interest rate but anyhow as 10.8 percent it is definitely it will be 6.9 but what we will do is try to take a difference between 8.1 and 4.7 8.1 and 4.7 that means here it is 0.33 so 3.4 is the difference 3.4 is the difference here fiscal deficit to primary deficit if i take 10.8 and 6.9 it is 0 0.9, 3.9, it is 3 point, it is 3.9. So, here the interest payment what you have made in the year 21, in the, in the year, in the year of pandemic, it is 3.9, but earlier it is 3.4. That means the difference is very high means you have paid more amount of interest in this year and this is nowhere related to the pandemic because you have not taken the debt last year whatever the debt that you have taken last year it will have a maturity after 5 or 10 years i will come to that later but just try to analyze it huh? try to analyze it so we have a high fiscal deficit no doubt in that situation demands that but are we in a right path are we prudent yes the condition at that point of time has demanded for the for us to go for a high fiscal deficit but immediately we have reached a path of normal level 7.0 may not be normal but certainly certainly we are in this trajectory of coming down and it has become possible because of our measures maybe vaccination reopening economy increasing tax collection investments and everything so are we prudent or not yes we are prudent we are not only able to manage the pandemic in a prudent way but even the post pandemic also we are developing our fiscal conditions in a prudent manner that is what you need to understand next yeah provisional outcome for 21 22 april to november 2021 see if you looking into the revenue receipts so they have here they have given in absolute term they have given in terms of uh, percentage of respective in terms of budget and here it is a growth from year to year just observe revenue receipts of 2021-22 but just looking into this 2021-21-22 see 8.13 this is the pandemic year this entire is pandemic year in the sense the lockdown year this is lockdown year completely it is a lockdown year this entire column you observe see your revenue receipts 8.13 but in 2021 again bounce back bounce back to what percent see this is 20 22 over 21 is 67 21 over 20 that means pre pandemic to pandemic is minus 17 percent reduction pre pandemic to pandemic is minus 17 percent reduction but the pandemic to post pandemic is 67 percent anyhow here we have a lower base that is the reason why it is 67 but what we are calculating is the post pandemic with the pre pandemic post pandemic with the pre pandemic is 38 again it is a good move again it is a good move and take the case of gross tax revenue again 12 percent pre pandemic to pandemic pandemic to post pandemic 50 pre pandemic to post pandemic 31 so if you observe assignment to the states that means how much amount we wanted to assign it to the states so pandemic to pre pandemic sorry pre pandemic to pandemic is minus 20 percent reduction but whereas the pandemic to post pandemic 20 point but pre pandemic to post pandemic 4.5 that means still we are lagging in providing some sort of resources to the states we need to improve on that we need to improve on that again non tax revenue and non debt receipts total expenditure just I'll, i want to see the total expenditure if you looking into the total expenditure it is Pan, pre pandemic to pandemic is 4.7 percent increase pre pandemic to pandemic to post pandemic is 8.8 .8, but if you make post pandemic with the pre pandemic it is 14 percent 
14 percent that means from the pre-pandemic to the post-pandemic now we are spending more amount of money just i looking into this capital expenditure because we are so interested and even revenue expenditure see if you looking into this revenue and capital expenditure part revenue and capital expenditure part actually pre-pandemic to pandemic 3.7 3.7 but if you looking into the capital expenditure during the pandemic year it is 12.8 during the pandemic it is 12.8 but from the post pandemic to the pre pandemic is 13 but if you looking into this 28 post pandemic to pre pandemic is 28 percent increase in capital expenditure in capital expenditure so this is how you can analyze this is how you can analyze the data okay Next, if you looking into the growth of taxes, growth of taxes, see growth in April November 2021 over April November 2020, that means the post pandemic year to pandemic year, April November 2021 means in this financial year. April November 2020 means the pandemic year, April November 2021, April November 2019. If you see, this is comparing pre-pandemic with the pandemic, pre-pandemic with the pandemic, pandemic with the post-pandemic. Now see the corporation tax, the green one, this is the pandemic to post-pandemic, how much increase it is. That means from pandemic to post pandemic, we have increased a lot. But whereas if you looking into the pre pandemic to pandemic, it is this much. So if you observe every figure, every figure, I think here some problem, but otherwise everything we have achieved. That means from the pandemic year to the post pandemic year, our corporation tax, taxes on income, customs and gross GST has increased. So, our tax collection is increased. That means from the pandemic year to the next year, we are able to increase our tax. That is the reason why we are able to manage our fiscal deficit levels. And we are able to spend more amount of money on capex. Trends in major direct and indirect taxes during April-November period. April November 2019, April November 2020, April November 2021. See a dip increase, a dip increase, a small dip increase. But when it comes to the union excise duties, even during the pandemic also it is increased. Even during the pandemic also it is increased because we have taxed this petrol and diesel to some extent more. That is the reason. And when it comes to the GST also, yes. But there is no much reduction in GST. But whereas when it comes to this corporation tax and ta this was much low because the business activity to some extent stalled and uh, because of this pandemic and all we have extended the filing period. Because of that also it has added into the next year rather than this. So, this is what increase in taxes, how it has increased from the pandemic to post pandemic. Next, now see this concept of buoyancy is very very important. This concept of buoyancy is very very important. If you looking into the buoyant GST collections during 2021-22. Actually, this buoyancy has happened in both direct and indirect taxes. See, what is the meaning of buoyancy? As when GDP is growing, simultaneously your taxation has to increase. In the Q1, Q2 of the 2020-21, because of the pandemic, the GDP has come down, so the taxation has come down. But whereas in Q3 and Q4, when economy started revising or it started growing, then certainly your tax collection should also increase. And if you observe this figure, it is about the GST during the nationwide lockdown. During the nationwide lockdown, during the nationwide lockdown, it has completely come down, but after it started increasing. During the second wave, to some extent it come down, but certainly it has increased. 
suddenly it has increased. That means we are having a buoyant tax collection. As the GDP is increasing, as the economy started reviving, our tax collection has also increased. Rising year average of monthly gross GST collection, you can see. And it has become possible with the opening of economy and also growing of economy and also streamlining the process of GST. Three reasons. Okay. Next, trends in deficit. Trends in deficit. Again, just I want to show, you know, this is the period. After that, again, we are in the descending tendency. Descending. Okay. So, 9.2, 7.4, 5.8. It has necessitated. But again, we have come down. We have not continued this. If you continued this, then it could have been dangerous. Okay. So, this is a one more trend in deficits. Next. Yeah. This is another important growth of central government's fiscal indicators, revenue receipts, gross tax revenue, non tax revenue, non debt capital receipt, total expenditure, revenue expenditure, capital expenditure. Again, just I want to show. See the capital expenditure that we have made. See the revenue expenditure. Here it is very high. Here it is very high, 31.3. And when you looking into when you looking into the pre-pandemic year 2019 and 20, just compare the revenue and as well as the capital. Just compare the revenue and capital. Revenue and capital. So capital 1920, 9.1, 2021, 26.5. If you observe the last 4 to 5 years, highest capital expenditure we have made. Revenue expenditure, highest revenue expenditure we have made as a percentage, as a percentage. Okay? Highest capital, highest revenue. If you looking into the gross tax revenues, you can see how danger we are. You see, good collections good collections, bad collections, low spending, high spending, certainly leads to the fiscal deficit. Okay? So, this is how you need to. And non-debt capital receipts, they are all come down during this pandemic. Okay? Next, yeah. <clears throat> Taxes as a percentage of GDP, you can use this information anywhere. Just make a note of this and it is very important. If you are looking into the GDP, so what is our total tax to GDP ratio? So out of our GDP, how much amount of is our tax collection? If I want 550, 5, 10, 15, 21, 29. 15, 21, 29. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is what? This is what our tax to GDP. Very low. Very low. We need to widen the tax base. And we have done to some extent. But if you see the corporate income tax, the total tax on income other than corporation. 2.5, 2.5, 2.4, 2.4, 2 2.5. Almost constant. Corporate tax come down 3.3 to 2.5. We have given a lot of exemptions to them. GST 2.6 to 2.8. Just observe these tendencies. Okay. And try to get a overall number what is the tax to GDP ratio in 2021-22 budget estimate cities. Okay. Just have an idea on this. But if you looking into this, if you looking into this, is there any big change in the tax collection? Just I will see 20, 20, 21. 7, 7, 7, 14. 7, 7, 14. 14 plus 22. 2, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2020-21, it is very high as a percentage of GDP. But you must understand GDP is low here. GDP is low here, though the percentage is very high, but the GDP is low here. 
So the absolute tax collections are very less here. Okay, just try to make an analysis with these type of diagrams. Okay, because it will help you somewhere. Next, yeah, trends in non-tax revenues of the central government. So till now we have seen only tax revenues. But what about non-tax revenue? Non-tax revenue means apart from the tax, what are the other sources that you have? Either it is in, in terms of interest that you are receiving or the dividends that you are receiving or any other thing like fee or anything that comes under this non-tax revenue. So interest receipt, dividends and profits, external grant, others and non-tax revenue. It is absolute number and this is the pandemic year. This is the post pandemic year and just observe. So even if you looking into the interest receipts, interest receipts, I think it was more here compared to that uh, pre pandemic year. But whereas when it comes to the dividends and profits, it has reduced dividends, dividends and profits, it is reduced. But budget estimate is this, but here also we are not performed well, still we need to do more on this. But the one of the major source of non tax revenue is something like dividend and profits. This has also come down during the pandemic, but we have to improve it, improve it. Okay. Next. Yeah. Major items of revenue expenditure. Major items of revenue expenditure. Just looking into this salaries, pensions, interest payment, major subsidies. This you can understand major subsidies, major subsidies. Okay. Interest payment also increased, but major subsidies increased 2.28 to 6.90, 6.90 because we have given lot of food subsidy, lot of food subsidies. Okay. And even if you see the revenue expenditure, you can understand how much increase that you have made from 23 to 30 that extra 7 lakh will be added to your fiscal deficit. Okay. Next, share of revenue and capital expenditure in total expenditure. This is revenue. See revenue has taken a peak here and when revenue has taken a peak, see the capital. When revenue has taken a peak, see the capital and over a period of time, we have changed our trajectory. Now we increased our capital, we have started reducing our revenue. When you, when I say like revenue is coming down, the trajectory of revenue is coming down, not in terms of absolute number. In absolute number, in absolute number, if you see in absolute, actually they have given only in terms of percentage, it is very good. Okay, They have given in terms of percentage. From 16, 16.5 to it has come down to 12, but whereas from 11, it went up to 88. But in absolute number still the revenue, revenue expenditure is very high compared to that of capital. But when you follow the trajectory of the growth of revenue expenditure and capital expenditure, the revenue part has come down and the capital part has gone. So you need to observe this portion. So this is a different mechanism or the agile approach that we have followed, an agile approach that we have followed. Next. See I think now you are understanding what type of decisions we have taken during the pandemic and are they really correct? And every decision has some scientific methodology, that methodology now you are learning. Now debt position of the central government at that point of time, see 2021 you can see the debt position, okay, they have given in terms of lakh crore, 105.24 lakh crore, but earlier it was less and this extra amount of money we have used it for the purpose of pandemic and in this external debt almost constant except increase in 1 percent like how increased every year that only we have managed. But whereas when it comes to the internal debt 
it has increased 80 lakh to 99 lakh crore and in that most of the times we have secured it from the securities securities so 65 to 78 so we have done it through the securities and non marketable securities next when you looking into the extra budgetary resources almost constant but whereas the total liabilities has increased from 99 lakh to 117 lakh crore so most of the debt that we have taken even during the pandemic is the internal debt not external debt so we no need to worry so much so much because if it is an external debt then definitely it has its own uh, effects on the various pra parameters on economy next trends in centers debt to gdp ratio absolutely our debt is increasing because the difference between fiscal deficit and the debt is fiscal deficit means in that particular year so here we have here actually in a particular year we have the problem that is the reason why we have taken the more debt but in the upcoming in the coming years when our economy has started performing well when our economy has started performing well then we have not depended more on the debts but we have started improving our revenue collection revenue collection in terms of both tax revenue non-tax revenue and other sources so we have reduced the fiscal deficit but your overall deficit is overall debt may not come down because the last year fiscal deficit will be added to the overall debt of the country so there should there is no change in the debt so debt always continue debt always continue in an upward even next year also it will go up until and unless if you repay but you cannot repay in every year every year there is some sort of repayment settlement again you will go for the debt again you will go for the debt next weighted average interest rate on central government securities see i want to mention one important point with respect to this rbi see why RBI matters a lot as far as the finances are concerned? Suppose if government need money, suppose if the government need money, from where you will get? By issuing the bonds. Who will issue the bond? It's the government will issue. But did really the government comes and give it to you? No, it will issue through the Reserve Bank of India. Now, Reserve Bank of India has followed a different approaches while they are issuing the bonds. It was there, but still they have popularized. Like they are issuing in the, both the primary market and as well as the secondary market. Primary market in the sense, actually earlier it was only to the institution institutions like banks and other things. But now recently Reserve Bank of India started a scheme called Retail Direct Guilt. Sorry, Retail Direct Scheme. So, retail direct scheme means like a retail investor, you and me, with a minimum denomination from 10,000 to 2 crore, you can invest directly. And while you are investing, you can directly invest it in, in primary market or secondary market. That means as a fresher, you can directly subscribe to the Reserve Bank of India's bond by having a retail direct guilt account, RDG. By having an RDG account, you can purchase. Or otherwise, there is a secondary market system to the Reserve Bank of India's uh, bonds we call it as negotiated dealing system NDS operation order management so NDS negotiating negotiated dealing system order matching OM this question was asked in this prelims what is this NDS OM it is a secondary market for the sale and purchase of the bonds issued by the reserve bank of india and through these mechanisms we are able to collect more amount of money more amount of money now the middle class people small business people senior citizen can directly invest into a risk free government security a risk free government security and you have understood how much amount of loans that we have taken from the market that means how much amount of money that has raised by the reserve bank of india from the market you understood but now i want to tell you one thing through this graph if you see the weighted average interest rate on central government securities that means whatever the central government security while you are issuing a bond you must pay some sort of interest and that interest rate if you observe see from 2000 to 2001 it was 11 but now it has come down to 
around 6 percent around 6 percent that means we are able to collect such a high amount of loan or high amount of uh, money at a lower interest rate at a lower interest rate and we deliberately reduce the interest rate in order to promote the growth that has anyhow saved the government to collect more amount of money and because of the lower interest rates people started investing in other instruments like gold and real estate and others because when uh, the uh, interest rates are so lower the value of the money comes down then the investor may not be interested in investing in these bonds and all that is why the gold price has started increasing but try to observe the reserve bank of india able to collect more amount of money through its bond at a lesser amount of interest rate so it may not burden so much reserve bank of india or the government next just try to observe this graph maturity profile of outstanding dated central government securities so in this dated securities every security every time government issue it has its own maturity and every year government has to pay and again it has to take and back it has to take back it, it sorry it has to uh, repay the money to the existing investors and it has to raise the money newly again 0 to 5 years 5 to 10 years 10 to 20 years 20 years and above this is normally this is normally uh, the period now in the next five years in the next five years out of your total liabilities you have to repay 29.3 percent and it was in the year 2012-13 the condition was you have to immediately pay 30 percent in the next five years that means we do not have such a very urgent requirements to repay the debt in the next five years though we have 30 percent but compared okay it's almost same almost same but 30 percent of the money how to repay it 20 years and above 19.2 10 to 20 years 22.5 5 to 10 years 29 that means in the next 10 years you have to repay almost 60 percent of the debt that you have taken not today but earlier you have taken so this is something uh, a maturity profile that they have given so most of the thing is 5 0 to 5 years and 5 to 10 years 10 to 20 and 20 years above is almost 20 20 percent just remember this fact next major deficits and defit, deficit and debt indicators of the state now if you looking into if you looking into the state's pattern what we have till now seen is about the India's but if you looking into the states the gross fiscal deficit increased to 4.6 but again come down to 3.7 from 2.6 suddenly it has increased to 4.6 because the state has to spend more on this revenue items lot of states has given some sort of financial benefits lot of food grains uh, food grain anyhow it is pds central government but state government has added some more things to that and they have spent lot amount of money some state have started these public kitchens some states have given some amount of money to the people some governments have started their own employment programs so that is why it has increased from 2.6 to 4 point but immediately we brought it to 3.7 that is how prudent we are take the case of revenue deficit yeah same that you can see the debt to gdp the debt to gdp ratio anyhow still it is high debt to gdp it is still high next fiscal indicators of the state now you can see fiscal indi fiscal indicators of the state just try to observe this revenue expenditure 4 lakh crore extra they have spent capital expenditure now you see even states also increase their capital expenditure that is the speciality it's not only the union union government has pursued the state government to spend more on capital expenditure okay tax revenue because gst you will get a compensation because in gst class i said even though we are unable to collect more but uh, union government has devised a window anyway i am going to explain that because of that it has increased to 12 to 15 non tax revenue 
and capital expenditure, revenue expenditure that you have seen. That means not only at the central level, but also at the state level, we are performed well. We are performed well. So, this is something about this is something about the various parameters of the economy, various parameters of the economy where we have taken an appropriate decision so that we have managed our finances prudently and also we have started growing in the direction of the growth path in various indicators of the financial position of the economy. So, that is how we have managed and our approach has leading to this type of development. That is what we need to understand from this. So, this is something about this is something about in a pandemic years how we have managed our fiscal prudently and how we started developing our finances in a prudent manner. This is something about this pandemic years and prudent fiscal development. Thank you. Amrita, IAS Academy.